Okay, so the next stage in this project is to do some organic form texture wrapping. And um, you've already created some organic forms and done some textures. The easiest way to show you this is on um, a simple cylinder. And what I'm going to do is kind of subdivide this as if I'm kind of stacking some cones. And I'll show you where we're going to take this next. So I'm approaching it two-dimensionally first. I'm going to wrap my cones around each other, make sure that it gets three-dimensional. And you don't have to start very good, right? It's about how these kind of stack up and finish in the end. I can get very specific about the contours here. Make them flare. The way you're going to light these is uh, is pretty simple, and we'll come back to that. Um, and I'll show you some tricks for that. So what you're paying attention to here is this kind of jagged edge that you're creating. And the edge is one of the most important places when you're doing texture. So let's make this slightly more organic so it's more applicable to what we're actually actually doing with this particular demo. So we're going to take that and we're going to arc it. And then we're going to subdivide. Do our final one. Do a few more subdivisions. And you'll notice how the subdivisions are kind of closer together here and further apart over here. That's important to remember. So what we're going to do on this outer edge is we're going to simplify things and we're going to bring these very close to the edge here. That way things aren't going to be particularly confusing and we're creating a very shallow ridge. So these little bits stick out just a hair, right? So it's quite, this is going to be our, our simple side. And here where everything kind of bends inward, this is going to be more complicated because it's all bending inward, right? So these divisions are going to be bigger and more complex. Okay, so we've got a different sort of different contour, different situation, right? Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to light these guys, and I'll show you the, a quick trick for that. So when you do light, it's it's pretty simple. You just go from a 45 degree angle and create a shadow core over here. You're gonna, um, and then what you're going to do, because these are basically shaped like this, and they're stacked like this, is you're going to change the angle of the, of the shadow core just a little bit to kind of match what you're doing with the cylinder or these cones. So you can also change the sort of center if you need to. Then you're going to bring, make sure that you bring the tone all the way out to the edge, being pretty loose with it. The next thing that you're going to do is on this other side, you're going to do a little half tone turning edge. And depending on the complexity, you can run these all together or do them individually. Then to kind of sell it, you need your super dark, dark shadow, which is going to go under here and it's going to go inside these little divisions.
and so on. And then that super dark is also going to go in here. Okay, and then you're going to do the same thing over here. So I would recommend combining the complex side with the shadow core tone. So you're just going to come around and do your shadow core bending around this kind of thing. Be sure to close this off at the end too. Then I'm going to modify the direction just a little to be a little bit more accurate. Be sure that I finish out with tone. Create transition over here. Do my halftone turning edge over here. And then I can go in with my super deep dark shadows. Pull those across, over, little teeny one, across, over, little teeny one right here, across, and there, and finish out this one. Cool. So this is basically um, how you're going to deal with the outer contour, right? So you have basically on one side of the contour, you have the simple side, the other side of the contour, you have the complicated side, and that's your form, right? So this is how you're going to approach it, um, but on a slightly more sophisticated level for your... Um, uh, for your actual full textures because there's stuff going on inside that. Here, there's nothing really going on inside because it's made up of basically just large cones. Um, so I'll, sh I'll show you how that's going to work with, with a more complex texture overall. So the first thing you're going to have is your, um, your form. And um, so I'm going to do kind of just a random organic form Maybe I'll maybe I'll kind of modify it just slightly. And then what I'm going to do is just go in and subdivide, give myself just a few um, a few wrapping lines to kind of help me understand kind of what's going on with the form. I'm going to switch directions, make this kind of bulge out here, and then go back this way. So um, I want to stay light in these early stages. So um, then I'm going to go in with kind of a loose, like, leafy, um, kind of pointy, triangular texture. And... Um, but first I'm going to subdivide, and on this one I'm going to subdivide really like kind of simply in this direction. I'm just going to do a big one in the middle and two small ones on the side. You don't need a lot of subdivisions to do this to do this texture thing well. The main thing, uh, the main thing that you're going to do is use these simple and complex sides and and some concepts with simple and complex within the form. So I'm just going to start in, and what you want to do is whenever you lay in a texture, you want to go basically front to back. So if this is my front, I'm going to use other ones going under it, and then my next layers, I can go in really easily and do stuff like that. That way I'm not spending a lot of time developing, uh, going the other direction and trying to... Um, figure out, well, I just drew that. Now I have this extra line that I don't need there. And so you're going to be fighting these these lines. So go 
go basically from the, the front of your texture, the front of the overlap, and, and work your way back. And so this top, in the way that I want to design it, is going to be sort of the front. And I don't have to stick super close to the to the grid. I can kind of um, say stay just only a little close, and then I can just work my way back. Stay kind of big. I can start thinking about how this outer contour is going to get affected by this stuff. Start thinking, well, maybe there's going to be some stuff flaring out here. And then I'm kind of bending this texture as it along with the, the grids that I've laid out. And I'm staying very light for this stage too. I don't want to commit to anything too early um, because I want to leave room uh, and do some texture work along with the lighting at the same time. So one of the coolest things about this is that I can go from this layout stage right into the lighting and then I can add more texture as I go along and as needed. So essentially I've made the texture kind of follow this form, um, at least in its initial layout. The next thing that I need to do is go ahead and light it. So because my form is bending around here, I'm going to have my shadow core right here and it's going to come around and bend this direction. It's going to follow that bulge and end right there. So I'm going to go ahead and put my core tone in. And on this, uh, when I have a texture going through, the core tone is going to be very, very important. So I have to know exactly where that shadow core is in order for the in order for the next sort of stage of this to get uh, to actually work well. And I'm going to get pretty dark with it. I don't think I'm going to go to the full core tone. I'm going to build that in as I go, but I'm going to get close. Definitely going to go past the uh, the tone of it. I'm going to make sure the tone goes out to the edge. This whole area is going to be in, in tone. Because I'm just going to throw this back into shadow. The next thing I can do is I can go ahead and put in my turning edge over here. So I can use a little half tone on this side. So now I've created a very distinct light area in the center here. And then I can use a little bit of transition tone here. And I've essentially just lit my organic form. So now what I have to go back and do is, is sort of reassert the texture. And the most important place to reassert the texture is right along the shadow core. So I'm going to go in and start putting in some more um, shadow tones where I've laid out these these forms right along the core. I'm going to start to define these little bits of texture a little bit more than, than I had. So right along the this edge is where most of my work is going to go because that's where it's going to be most needed and most effective. So what I'm doing is I'm kind of working naturally with the complexity of the shadow core where there's a bunch of transitionary tones and making use of that concept. Okay, so I'm just going to work my way through all the way around the core. And then as the core changes, I'm going to work through through the core down here, right? So the way that I'm approaching the texture is different because the direction of the core has changed from going along with the texture to going against the texture. And so I may need to do some things like uh, change the transition here because this, this part of the texture is raised and this part is not. So I can pull some core tone and sort of change the shape of the core down here. I have these little raised areas. And these are little lowered areas. 
So you can see how this edge that I'm creating is fairly complex. And I can go in and, and add little bits of complexity as needed through here. So now this has already become somewhat convincing. I can leave a lot of information out in the shadow side because that, uh, because I've done a lot of complex work here, I need something simple against it to kind of um, give your eye a break. So now what I need to do is uh, come back into the end of the contour and reassert what's going on with the contour because right now I've got kind of a boring contour and I need to be able to do things like this up here. Now the complex areas are going to are most likely going to be like right here um, where these things bend in. And so I'm going to work my way towards those areas. I'm going to do a little bit of um, simple texture work right here. Make sure that there is some attention to the contour um, in the simple areas. And then in the complex areas, I'm going to be sure that I have a lot going on and that they're creating more interesting shapes and I'm treating this contour a little bit differently. And I can actually, if I want to, I can layer stuff back in, in space as if it's coming around from the other side entirely. I can just keep overlapping these things. Occasionally I can make one that flies out if I feel like uh, a side is getting too simplistic. And what I'm also doing is kind of just varying up the, um, the line weight and the line darkness as I go around. And you'll see that even though there's no texture going on really in the shadow side, it's kind of faking you into thinking that because I've given an outer texture and I've done a lot of texture work on this core. So this kind of stuff fills in the gaps for itself. I can come over here and do the same thing. Make sure that there's just slight bits of texture here and there. And what I, what I can do here is I'm kind of um, building up a little bit of darker core tone to help my, myself sort of transition around the edge here. And I can work into the halftone side just a little bit um, and make sure that I'm, that I'm kind of using some of my textural elements just to give it a little bit stronger of a turning edge. And then if I need to, I can kind of uh, come into some of these areas and add a little bit more definition and so on. But this becomes less important um, than what I'm doing, what I'm doing um, around the, uh, the edges and around the actual shadow core. So now I've kind of created this almost hairy looking thing. And, um, you know, if I wanted more detail in the texture, I could do this layout, kind of get this all working. And then I could take one of these triangles and say, well, if this is my little triangle, if I wanted it to be hair, I could, I could render it like hair. I could give it, um, tones that go along with it and create strands, right? And render it more like hair and give it kind of fuzzy edges on the end. Right. And I could probably change them, some of these, make them go more random directions if it needs to be like, you know, um, more of a, a feather. I can give it a, a center line and I can render it more like a feather and break up the texture of the outer edge of each individual thing. Um, but that's even more complicated. And so you have to simplify everything even further to kind of get that to work. Um, you know, I can make sure that I'm getting dark enough with my with my tone area and I have this huge tone area that's kind of just blank here. So what I may need to do is just come back in here and do a little bit more work to kind of make it more interesting and and uh, more complete, make make sure things still kind of like turn around in this area. 
And so this is this is how you're going to approach the sort of next stage of, of doing this texture wrap um, project. And, um, and what you'll notice about this one is that we have a complex area here. We have a simple area here. We have a complex area here. We have a simple area here. Then inside, you'll notice that the core tone itself, uh, everything going along there is really complex. And then everything in the light is very simple. And then everything in the tone areas is also very simple. So we are creating a bunch of, of balancing areas of detail and breaks from detail that make everything easier to see and more clear. Um, if you go, if you overdo it with the complexity, which is kind of my tendency, um, then everything gets muddled and confusing. And you can do that intentionally, um, but I want you to be sure that you have control and choice.